People who are have been homeless, what was the first night without a home like, and how did you adapt to your new situation? Slept in my vehicle. Couch surfed with a friend. Squatted in an unused trailer, all while still working at a Walmart. Saved enough to get a crappy apartment and just kept going from there. I didn't really realize what was going on. I was about 6-7 at the time. Dad said we were going to go for a drive and to pack my backpack with all the clothes I could fit and one toy. Mom was just crying. Me and my brother sat in the back seat. He was a little older and was holding our Sega Genesis and looking scared. We drove for a little while, it was already getting dark, and we parked in front of a Walmart and Dad said he had to rest for a while. Was the first of many many nights we slept in the car. I remember one of my parents was always awake with their hand in their coat pocket. Looking back it was obvious they had a gum for protection. Sleeping and shifts. Edit, Jesus this blew up and thanks for the gold. Trying to respond to all but my poor inbox. Edit 2, WTF guys 3 gold? Thank you. I was homeless for a couple of months a year or two ago. I had a car and a low paying job so I lived in the woods in a tent for a bit. The first night was miserable. I ended up sleeping really uncomfortably in the passenger seat of my car and it was a really cold night. After that I got a tent and slept on an old climbing pad I had. The first night was hell but the next several weeks were actually not so bad. I had a spot in the woods where I was well hidden and would cook over a fire. I really didn't have it that bad but it gave me quite a bit of sympathy for people who really do end up on the streets in a much more desperate situation. Sheet is not easy. I kept waking up in the middle of the night and would start walking home. I'd get a few steps then stop and realize I had nowhere to go and turn and walk back over and lay on the ground. The ground is very cold and I felt a lot of shame. First night my wife and I landed up sleeping outside we slept in a local park that I knew. We had come down from the countryside with a few rands, enough for one meal maybe, and had hoped to stay with a friend. He was unable to give us a place to stay. So we had to sleep outside. After the insecurity of that first night I told my wife that we have to find a safer place to sleep. So we climbed up the slopes of Table Mountain, about a one hour walk, and found quite a obscured spot amongst some bushes and trees. We cleared it out of sticks and rocks. Made it a bit habitable and then went make to the city looking for work. We'd spend the day going from one place to the next looking for work until it started growing dark. Then we'd head up the mountain to our little spot for the night. Did that daily for a month until we were able to secure a small shack room in the townships. Where we stayed for another few months until I get a job offer. It was my wife's temp waitering job that kept us fed whilst I was looking for work. Biggest challenge was mental. Keeping focused. Clean. Looking presentable and just making my job looking for a job. When I was a teenager I had lots of problems with my mom. I pretty much chose to be homeless. I slept at a Catholic church across from my high school so I could still make it to school and graduate early. I remember feeling really sad because I slept where they put people's ashes. And I remember being so sad that those people could comfort me in death more than anybody alive. I used to talk to them. If there's camera footage I look insane. I never realized how alone I was in the world until I was homeless. And I never realized how cold concrete can be. It chills you right to your bones and is painful. Sleeping in my car wasn't that bad. It was summer. So it was pretty warm which was my biggest issue. Showered in the gym. And spent most of my day at the library before going to work. For the first few nights it wasn't bad. However one night police found me sleeping in my car and escorted me to the local homeless shelter. Which was one of the most terrifying nights of my life. Since I'm lying there in a top bunk. When a huge argument breaks out because one guy breaks out some meth. Wouldn't share it with a second. Then a third got pissed and started screaming at them to be quiet because he needed to sleep. Edit, since this is coming up a lot. People keep asking how it was legal that the police escorted me to the shelter. I don't know the legality of the issue. What I can say is that I was woken up by a knock on my window to see four cops. To cop cars. 
they were singing those super bright flashlights through my window at me. And I didn't even think of arguing with them. I started being homeless at 19. A previous foster parent put me out for coming home from college one night. And I had called up a friend last minute. When I started to realize I wouldn't be able to crash or stay anywhere. I am fairly certain I started to dread. And spiral into a constant. Underlying depressive state. All I could think about was am I going to die like this? Do I matter? Will no one help me? I'm sad. I'm scared. I don't want to feel like I have to beg. What if I'm stuck like this? Is this really my life right now? 19-26 was a very challenging time. Edit, I am stunned. Taken aback and truly appreciate the feedback and support that's been granted to me this day. And will continue to respond. But I am not used to so much verbal traffic to peruse. Nevertheless. I will make an AMA upon several redditors suggestions. As a lot of this can be encapsulated in so many words. And I want to help by way of sharing. Thank you all again. And I am still doing my very best. Better or worse to this day. I simply have no intention on going backwards. It was terrifying and cold and hungry. I didn't sleep a wink. I adapted over time. Extremely steep learning curve to surviving homelessness. Nothing really prepares you for it. I was kicked out by my mother at 16 and spent 2 months homeless before the local authority placed me in foster care. I think what hit me first was how my own mother could make one of her own children homeless. I felt like the least favorite of her children, it all came out of nowhere. I racked my brain for years after. Trying to think of what I might have done in particular. Also the crippling loneliness you feel when you are trying to get hold of people to ask for a place to sleep for the night. I could not feel more alone in the world when someone would either not answer my message or tell me they were busy. I'm pretty sure I camped out in the park that night. Didn't sleep at all. I was getting high. So it really didn't truly sink in until I was broke and dope sick. Then the desperation started. Going to gas stations jumping car to car asking for money. Stealing what I had too. It was a miserable existence. There are so many things you don't think about when you're not homeless. Taking a shower. Washing your clothes. And the boredom. Hours upon hours of nothing to do. And the constant noise. There was nowhere to go where it was truly quiet. Fortunately I eventually got arrested for shoplifting reached out to family who helped me get back on my feet. When you're a teenager it seems kind of cool to sleep in the car. On the couch or floor of a friend or acquaintance. Or for your dad to scam a rented apartment for a month or two without paying for it. Moving around every few months carrying everything that you can in an old Honda Civic seems like an adventure. We once moved a couch across town in it. We must have looked like a couple of idiots. Once after a few months of staying in a place where we had no furniture. Were sleeping on the floor. The carpet of which was so flea infested that you could literally see the fleas hopping around. The landlord got so frustrated with us basically squatting in his property, my dad promised to pay and never did, that he removed the front door. So we went out to scam some food from somewhere and came back to find no front door. Which in retrospect is a pretty awesome way to get someone out of your property. One of the ways we scammed food would be to go to the breakfast buffet of a fancy hotel. Tell the server that we had a room there. Eat a ton of food and just walk out. This was also kind of fun but looking back it is a kind of ducked up way for a dad to treat his teenage kid. I was about 9 years old. And my mom said we were going on a camping trip. I didn't really suspect anything. As it was summertime and we went camping a lot when I was younger. Although I did wonder why we were packing so much stuff. After a few weeks of camping. I started to complain. But my mom kept insisting that it was good for us to get in touch with nature. ETC. Then school started. And we were still camping. And we kept camping for another 6 months. When we finally got a house. My mom cried with joy. And we don't camp anymore. I remember being really hungry and acting weird because of the low blood sugar. Almost delirious. 
This was when I made a futile attempt to run away from an abusive home with no money. I ended up going back because of that. I was only homeless for about 6 weeks. At 36 years of age. After several years of depression and anxiety slowly eroding my resources. Relationships and general will to try anymore. I ended up having a final blowout with my GF. Who reasonably couldn't handle me anymore. I started sleeping at work. Which wasn't even a full time job. The delicacy involved in not getting caught. And the freedom from the extremely unhealthy state my relationship had been in. Kept my mind away from the absolute. Abject terror that was hiding beneath the surface. The scary part of homelessness for me was the growing sense that if I fell any further I'd probably never get back up. It takes resources to be clean. Fed and rested. And if you aren't those things it's very hard to get resources. Let alone find the will to try. But that first night was all tridge. All focused on being sure the second night wasn't going to be on the street. I pulled it off for 6 weeks. And that time. Actually, saved my life, I was away from conflict. Intimately connected to how dire my circumstances had become. Forced into a very regular schedule, routine is really good for me but nigh impossible in a depressive state. And, without bills, was able to save enough for damage deposit and rent. I still struggle with depression in a pretty serious way but the animal terror of having nowhere and no one really seared itself into me. A better motivation would be the future I want than the future I fear. But as it stands I at least have a motivator strong enough to escape the incredible gravity of mental illness. I was 13 when my parents kicked me out and told me they no longer wanted anything to do with me. I was terrified to visit a shelter because I'd known some foster kids and the whole system scared me plus I wanted to continue going to the same school. And didn't want to lose my friends too. The scariest part at that age was really finding out what I was hoping to eat. There had been a dilapidated trailer just minutes down the road from my dad's place so I stayed in that. I don't think it all really hit me until I had to choose one night between food and blankets because the temperature was expected to drop down to the mid 30s and I had only had one somewhat thin blanket at that point. The next day. I put on my best attire which was nothing impressive and asked for a job at Long John Silver's. I lied and told them I was 15 and I worked 5 days a week rushing over after school. I ate more unhealthy than I have since to save money for some form of shelter which came in the form of a 91 Toyota Camry that I purchased out of the thriftinical for $300. I loved that clunker plus eating myself was much easier. From there it was mostly uphill. Found an older lady willing to rent me her garage without any sort of credit check. Took a couch off the side of the road to sleep on. I even had internet in there where I mostly read scary stories all night. I wish video streaming services were really a thing back then, and I just kinda learned to roll with the punches. My childhood wasn't normal. It was downright terrifying a good chunk of the time but it is what made me who I am today. I lived at school until I dropped out due to a bunch of personal reasons piling up. My mom was mad that I dropped out and wouldn't even talk to me the first few days after and my relationship with my father is complicated non-existent. I took the train to my hometown. Even though I didn't know what I would do or where I would go when I got there. I ended up staying the first night in my brother's room, not quite an apartment. Just the one room with a kitchen and bathroom he shares with like 5 other people. After that. I posted to social media that I was in this unfortunate situation. And a friend I had lost touch with despite ones being very close offered that I could stay with him and his fiance until I got a place of my own. I never actually had to sleep outside. And I found an apartment after about one month so all in all I was pretty lucky with how it turned out. Oh and my mom and I are cool now. And my dad and I are also trying to rebuild our relationship after he finally divorced his no longer new wife. I've always referred to her as his new wife even though it's been over a decade. I was homeless for a little while in the 80s. It's terrifying at first. You feel so unsafe. I was a teenager. And wasn't willing to close my eyes and sleep on a park bench alone. So. I went to local shelter and lied about my age. The forced me to shower and do a pee test. 
It turns out the women in that shelter were scarier than the street so the next night I didn't go back. I slept in a park but ultimately made squatter friends and stayed with them. It was very much a community and I felt safe and loved there. The biggest problem with being homeless in the city is no one wants to let you use the bathroom. Even park bathrooms are locked. Squat peeing in between cars can be done quickly and undercover. But when you get your period it's a nightmare these days I have stability so I never pass a homeless person without buying them some food or giving them a little money. And if they use it for drew gus or alcohol I don't care. Living on the streets is hard. Drink if you need to my friend. The first time. I had to live in a motel for half a year. Each night was the same as the last. Cramped. Upsetting. But dry and safe. The second time. I got lucky and was already staying at my grandparents house the night when I became homeless again. Thankfully. They allowed me to stay until I eventually got a new home. The first night there was blissful peace and ignorance. I once was fooled by an ex into moving back in with her after a breakup. After a couple of weeks she decided to have a yard sale. This yard sale ended up featuring most of my stuff. Then with money in hand she decided it was time I went back to my place. My place which had nothing in it. My place which I had given notice on. My place which was already awaiting a new renter. I spent my last two weeks sleeping on a hardwood floor using sweaters as blankets and then when the day came to vacate I threw all my clothes in a plastic bag and just started walking. I was destitute. I had absolutely nothing and no idea where to start. It was right in the Canadian winter so staying outside would be a death sentence in many cases. So I did the only thing I could think of. I sat in a 24 hour Tim Hortons. I used what little money I had to purchase small coffees once in a while so I at least had an excuse to sit there. Eventually my cash ran out and I thought for sure I'd get the boot. Then one of the ladies working the counter came over and just handed me my usual order. I guess she probably figured out what was going on and felt bad. The second time she did it I struggled not to cry. I'm pretty thankful because my next idea if I was asked to leave was to politely refuse then sit and wait for the cops. Better than freezing to death. Morning came and I had saved only enough to catch a single bus. Headed downtown to try to find some friends. I did. And I couch surfed between a lot of them. I never spent a night out in the cold. But I spent many in a coffee shop or bouncing between friends. It was the worst my depression ever got and the closest I ever came to actually ending my life. Things are a million times better for me now. But I'll never forget how worthless I felt.